All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and if you've been watching my videos, you may have come across some where I'm talking about decorrelating sources and uh, the basis, the fundamental theory that nowhere in nature does the same sound radiate from multiple places and that uh, nowhere in nature do multiple unrelated sounds radiate from a single point in space. Now, the process that I went through to come up with those very simple descriptions and observations was many, many years, decades long, and involved uh, quite a bit of trial and error and tests. And I want to describe how I came to those perspectives, as well as offer some practical applications and ways, not just like, hey, try this or do that, but help hopefully you understand the fundamental concepts so that you can utilize it and expand upon it in your um, mixes or in whatever you're doing with audio. And so I'm going to jump around a bit. I'm going to talk about it from many perspectives, uh, the development of various sound systems and monitor systems and the double hung PA. I'll do some demos and show some advantages of decorrelation and as well as uh, multiple source audio, and how you can apply that to uh, mixing monitors or doing live sound uh, from a house. So early on, I started designing speaker systems. The very first pro audio speakers that I built were some double, were some single 12, uh, one inch um, floor monitors I built with my friend Tom Hodder. And it was a Gauss 12 and a potato masher horn, and it was um, two-way active. And going out and doing shows, we'd find that you'd turn up the monitors and you'd get the vocals fairly loud in there, what seemed to be plenty of volume. And then the band would start playing, and they'd ask for a little guitar, a little bass, put a little kick. And by the time everything got put into the monitors, the vocals were now, were now struggling to be heard. So then you'd start taking stuff out. Even if you could get the vocals loud enough, it was a point of diminishing returns. So I set out to solve this by w looking at the, analyzing the issue, um, figuring the 12 was getting overloaded. How about building a 1510 one inch monitor, 1510 tweeter monitor, and dividing that energy up between the 15 and 10? Well, and then the horn. So the 10 horn could do the vocals, the 15 could work on the bass, and that worked pretty well. But then we needed more volume. And we went even farther and went to a double 15, 10, two inch. So now we've got this three way monitor that. Um, the 15s could take all the low end and the vocal clarity could come out of the 10 and we were able to get much higher volumes and maintain clarity. Keep expanding the amount of ways and this was all based on finding that as more instruments were combined, you're taking kick and bass, guitar and vocals and piling them all into the speakers, each bandwidth range was getting overloaded. It was running out of energy and we didn't have the ability to put more power into the speakers because they were already at the limits we had tested and found out where they're blowing out. So what we needed to do, what I decided to do was limit the bandwidth and increase the uh, types of speakers and break it all up. And also to add clarity. If you really turn the bass up loud and those 15s are really working, the 10s are not working so much. They still have some room left to reproduce the vocals. And then the crossover points could be shifted between the drivers such that they all had equal burden and were able to reproduce the sounds uh, with a level of clarity. Um, as you can see though, this becomes a point of diminishing returns. We can go six way, seven way, pretty soon you've got, uh, you're getting so many ways and it wasn't really solving the problem. It wasn't really giving me this open, distinct clarity that I was looking for. So I started to realize that maybe it's not about chopping the bandwidth up between drivers, but rather, what if I was to split it apart? 
And this is where I got into designing the micro wedge, which is currently made by EAW. And here the concept switched from dividing the frequency range up to finer and finer gradations. What if I took and had point sources, coaxial point sources, and I put the guitar into this wedge here, and I put the vocal into this wedge here. So now, if the guitar was really loud in the wedge, the vocal would still have the wedge to itself. Because I found that when you turn the vocal up by itself in the wedge, it was fine. It was all the other instruments that were causing the vocal to not be audible and, to, and blurring it. Well, what if we just get the vocals into their own monitor rig? What if we put them in their own clear wedge and get the instruments out of it? So that was the basis of the uh, micro wedge, which um, here's some little tiny ones. I actually used the um, drawings from the micro wedge to 3D print little baby versions. And you can see that they all nestle up. Now, putting th taking three wedges like this and running the same sound into multiple sources, all reproducing that, covering the same area, is going to create comb filtering and phasing issues. And I'll demo that in another video. It'll, it'll be all uh, messy. You don't want to have multiple sources reproducing the same signal in close proximity, covering the same area, unless those sources are so close together that they become a unified source, which is what line arrays try and do. But in that situation, the coverage pattern narrows. As soon as you're off axis, it becomes um, uh, very beamy in the on axis. So if these were close enough to actually form a line array, then you'd have this very narrow coverage coming out. But that's not what the design's all about. The design is about taking and setting these up into the microphone null patterns uh, where you have maximum rejection, wherever that may be, and putting the vocals in there and getting those vocals dialed in perfect. Now we're not going to mess with that. Taking another one that's either passive or biamp, and these are all passive or biamp, and putting that with the instruments or putting two more with the instruments on the outsides or maybe two more on the insides if you're farther out here that have here's where you put your guitar so now what happens is your vocals pretty much have a wedge a source to themselves to reproduce so it what i found was and what it does is it allows the advantages of reducing that blurring of multiple signals moving the cone too far. If you look at my other video on IM distortion where I demonstrate that, and I'll do that with these monitors as well. I'll put some music in there and talk into them in um, one of the future ones in this series. So it reduces the IM dis distortion by reducing the burden on the wedge, by on the cones. But it also has another advantage is it utilizes this source location perception. We as humans have the ability between our two ears to locate where sounds are coming from. And if we hear a sound coming from here and a sound coming from here, it's easier to differentiate those and listen to one, focus on one or focus on the other or hear both of them as independent sounds than if they both radiate from the exact same point in space. If we have two people talking very close, very close proximity at the same time, it's going to be very difficult to understand which one's talking and what, what they're saying. If we move them apart, so one's over here and one's over here, now we have the two conversations. We actually have the ability to focus. We could turn our head, we can hear this person and that person. Now they're still going to be talking at the same time, but this source location perception does give us an auditory advantage. We can tell that it's coming from a different place and it's less likely to blur in our minds and um, the way we hear it. So reducing the IM distortion and increasing the source location perception by moving uh, these sources away from each other, getting the vocals away from other instruments reproducing similar frequencies gives you a clarity boost or gives the artist, the musician, 
a clarity boost, and it also allows you to maybe really put the bass or the guitar or something very loud. You could put like a 15 inch wedge between two of, tw of the 12 inch wedges, 12 for vocal to 15 for bass, and really beat up that bass one and put the kick in all three just to get some low end, the low end of the kick in all three, or, and beat up one of them, and it might even be distorting a bit, but the distortion is kind of a boop, boop, boop. So that isn't ma that doesn't matter, but that distortion isn't blurring the upper end of that cone in the vocal range, so the vocal doesn't go <laughs> up in the um, auditory range. So breaking these things up. All right, so that was the basis of designing the micro wedge system. Now after I did that, then I was like, wait a minute, can I apply this to the main PA? And when I was approached by Chili Peppers management to design a sound system that was unique for a world tour that really would kind of give some awe to the public and do something uh, different. And he, he talked to the lighting guy as well and said, do something special. I thought about it and I was like, why don't I take that same concept that's been functional in monitors of breaking things up and having them come from different sources, this like nowhere in nature do multiple sounds radiate from a single point in space. What if I have two PAs and I reduced some of that piling of every single instrument into a single point in space and I started to break them up. So the double hung PA was actually a manifestation of the micro wedge design. And the micro wedge design was a way to solve the problem with running into multiple ways. I already had triamp monitors trying to get more and more clarity and volume and reduce IM distortion. Um, and going to a five-way, a four or five-way monitor was just absurd. You know, three ways already considered over the top and five-way for the main PA. So I'd push that to the limit of extremes. Now, this isn't all hypothetical stuff. This is all stuff that was perceived as an issue and solutions thought of and actually built, tested, and then these products were then toured the world. You know, they went with various bands, Pearl Jam and Chili Peppers and Blink-182 and all kinds of um, Soundgarden, you know, deployed it throughout with major artists to um, test these designs in the real world and refine these concepts. So what I'm doing here is I'm sharing with you kind of the process behind how I came up with the various um, systems and the real fundamental, I mean, the culmination of all of this, decades of testing and learning and listening has been distilling everything down to this concept, the concept, the concepts of nowhere in nature do multiple unrelated sounds radiate from a single point in space. It just doesn't happen. And when we do that, we deny the listener the source location perception. We increase the burden on the speaker as far as the I am distortion. It sounds unnatural. Now, I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm not saying we're not going to do that in the airport, having the same sound come out of every announced speaker, of course. And in small clubs with PA, mono PAs, it's not a this is right or this is wrong thing. It's a concept of a way to look at sound so that you can apply what you know, these tools to your situation and the application at hand to improve the outcome and increase the probability of reaching a result that you desire. And the corollary to that concept where nowhere in nature does the same exact sound radiate from multiple points in space. What causes comb filtering and it allows us to create subarrays and it's the phasing effect. If we have situations where reducing that is beneficial or if we're running into that, here's a tool that you can use 
to reduce it, decorrelate things, sending different decorrelated or unrelated instruments to various places. All right, so I'm going to do more videos. I'll do some demos on this, and I've got a lot of material on this subject, and that's because it's important to me, and it's really what I've been working on for decades now. Cool, cool. Hope you enjoy it.